All right, guys, I am here today to talk about the whole um, rep Ponzi scheme that's been going on. Um, but I'm not here to talk about, you know, the fact that it's wrong or anything like that. I, I'm here to put things into perspective. I want to give you guys some historical knowledge because I feel like from what I'm seeing is that there's a lot of people who are just saying, oh, you know, we're in this pandemic and, you know, these are new ways that people are trying to scam. But to be honest, you know, I've been around since probably the beginning of just being a, a, a listener uh, and seeing the you know, the, the, the mixtapes on the web and then translate to apps and then all these, this new innovation. So I'm hoping that I, I, I can give you guys some perspective and I can, and then we can come to a good, you know, understanding where everything should lie and like, and then we can move forward from there. Okay. Because I think it's important. It really is. Like, I think people are just and they have every right to. I'm not saying that they shouldn't. But people are just like, you know, probably on that cancel wave where they're probably on like that, oh, I'm not fucking with this person. Oh, they just came with this, that, and the third. But to be honest, you see, this is why this is important. To be honest, it's been happening. It's always been around. And... I hope that with this discussion that I could talk about where it came from, how it started, how, how long it's been around, okay? And what you need to know to avoid these things because it's important. So let's get into it. All right. So I am from, I grew up on like, you know, everything I'm I'm I grew up on everything all when the music was booming on the internet like every single song and every single everything that you wanted this is when the music industry was trying to figure out what they want to do with digital distribution and that was my time so you get these um you know sharing sites that start coming up and you know listen to all the music you want and xyz and then you know, everybody all of a sudden wants to get it to work. Now, uh, everybody all of a sudden wants to get their music online, sorry. And it works for artists. This is becoming like a proven thing. Like artists are trying to get their music online. They're getting on like MySpace. They're putting it on their page. People are listening to it and they're like, oh yeah, this is great, da, 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 da. You know, like look at Soldier Boy. That's how. That's exactly how he blew up. Like he started putting his music on sharing sites, and you know, renaming them to Little Wayne or you know, um, Jay Z or something like that. And then people would just listen to it, and he blew up. He understood the power of you know, online distribution at an early time before everybody else did. Um, he was only sixteen years old, so this tells you a lot. <laughs> Um, so coming up right around then, um, I think there was, um, you know, we have these platforms that start coming out and this is pre Apple pre, I think Apple was around, but they didn't have like a, like a streaming thing. Um, uh, but this is, let's just say it's pre Apple music, pre SoundCloud, pre Spotify title, all these things. There wasn't really a place for digital content because it just didn't exist okay but okay somebody like myself loves to just want to hear music and new music and I, I was the type of person I always wanted to like I need to know what this is before everybody else does so I was constantly online looking for things so there you go with the with the um the you know the music distribution the, sh the sharing sites so boom it's it was working in a way where people were just kind of like they knew about this 
and artists started to take notice because if you could have a kid come up and make this model work and he blows up like he was doing so soldier boy ain't that was doing so much numbers better than these artists that's been around for like 10 years they want to know okay then with online and you know you get the whole like you know different scenes and like you got the east coast you got the west coast now you got down south now you got detroit now you got Midwest, west now you got all these you can tune in to different really different genres of hip-hop because you you're not limited to what's on the radio anymore and what's being you know what's limited within your area because i listen i'm from the east coast all right they're not playing west coast music out here i'm from new york all right i've lived on in different states on the east coast they're not playing it like that and on the same side over there and i definitely wasn't going to be listening i definitely would have never known what was going on in 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 chicago i definitely would have never known what was going on in in texas and everywhere else like that just wasn't it we were you were restricted or confined in your in in your in your vicinity that you were in so there it goes if you weren't in the music industry let's just be clear i'm i'm speaking from a a a place of where the consumer lies because this is going to be important so please bear with me all right so you get online you know everybody's trying to do this but then if you are somebody that's new all right now you have these mixtape sites and you know you got all these uh digital platforms to put your music on but you if you want to really be co-signed and you really want you know, people to take a listen, you're going to need somebody to push, help push that for you. Okay. Like pushing, meaning making sure the blogs hear it, making sure it's the first page, the first slot. And then if you had a DJ that can co-sign for you as well, then it's automatically going to just light the streets on fire. Now me being consumer, I want to hear that first. I want to do this. I want to I want to make sure that I know about this song before it hits the radio. Like that was that was me. That was the kind of person that I was, you know? So, boom. So, you know, you want to get with a DJ. You want to get with a reputable DJ. And at this time, right? At this time, at this era, that type of model worked. Because that placement, paying for that placement, paying for that consignment, it worked. You needed that. You wanted to make sure that you could go, you can meet a, a DJ in Atlanta. He co-signs for you, put your music on in, in the club. You know what I'm saying? You want to make sure that you're linking up with the right people. You're paying your money for the, and you're getting a huge return. And this worked. Because now, remember, we're still at a time where the labels didn't know what to do with this new way of distributing music. Artists wanted to get a buzz in the street. They needed to get their fans up. They needed to to be known. Your favorite artists did it. Wayne, Future, Drake, um, Meek, all started their whole platform I'm talking about outside of their vicinity, where they're from, except Lil Wayne. We already knew who he was. Everybody started this way and everybody got a a cosign from somebody, a DJ. It was working. That model worked. Okay. This model was probably the best thing and the only thing artists who were either independent starting off independent trying to get a deal just seeking some sort of some growth this was the only way there wasn't anything else labels weren't controlling this they weren't making sure i mean they would they would even tap in in a bit let me let me clarify that they were tapping in a bit they were seeing that this model worked they knew how to to gain fans and then control everything else that needed to happen outside of, of, of the digital world at that time. So, 
boom, we fast forward, you know? Um, and I think this is kind of why at that time, let me clarify too. At that time, you need to put a body of work together. All right. Period. It wasn't like what we see today. One song viral. It wasn't like that. You needed a body of work. Okay. And you needed that DJ to co-sign for you. And I really feel like those stars that really got that, that understood that are really still leading the industry till this day. Okay. Because they understood that nowadays we don't have bodies of work. Sorry. We don't have bodies of work. We don't have like some people don't even take the craft seriously. It's just like, you know, let's just get it viral. We'll get into that. I know if we can talk about that later. So fast forward, we get into this digital age. Now let's just recap real quick. Back then people were paying $500, $1,000, $2,000, 5K, whatever for placement. Even the little guys, they knew that this model worked, all right? It was the only thing they had. It was the only thing that they had. They didn't have anything else, all right? Unless she was really like walking up into like Epic Records and dancing on tables like Bobby Schmutter, then then you didn't have a way to do that. If you're somewhere in freaking the Midwest and you're 16 years old and you're trying to you're trying to come up this was your best opportunity so now we're getting into this digital age you know things are becoming more innovative and there's more regulations on the music industry because they took such a huge hit you know they got into the game late all right and they wanted to regulate it they knew that not just the artists were profit profiting because the artists can drop a mixtape do a whole tour, okay? A whole tour in every state, make a bunch of money, and nobody had to see that besides the artists, all right? But now they want to come in and they want to regulate and, you know, they want to they want to have some control over this, which is fine, no worries, you know? they A lot of these things have changed. Now, now when that comes into play, we have teams, we have people who are finding innovative ways to work with the labels with these new regulations, meaning we have more DSPs, we have more tools for distribution. And just look at everything around with like Instagram and TikTok and Twitter and, you know, YouTube. You know, you don't need a whole full body of work anymore, okay? And you definitely don't need to be paying anybody for that full body of work price if you're an artist who has one song, you know? Because those one, the one songs are going, the singles are really going viral and they're catching the attention of these labels, all right? So that, with that in mind, all right? With that in mind, there is really the old model that I grew up on really doesn't work anymore. All, a lot of these tools are in the hands of the artist, of the creator. You have digital distributing platforms all over the place as low as $5 to distribute your music. You might not gain a fan base. And I, I actually think that that's where the, we're, we don't have like analytics for that or anything like that. Like you won't get a fan base if you just say, hey, let me put your music on, you know, Spotify right now. It's just not going to work. If, especially if you're new, if you don't have an audience that like that growth thing is completely different. So I'm not speaking about that. But this, that, that is a good point because that's going to come into play about what I'm going to say. So, you know, you could distribute your music yourself and get 60 spins under 100. Let's just say under 100 somewhere, you know, um, these different platforms have different algorithms that they, you know, that they 
uh, score the tracks at and, 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 you know, decide when a user should listen to it. So they're, they're sophisticated enough that it doesn't really need a manual person anymore to vet out your song. Okay. Um, so, you know, a lot of these tools that we depended on as an independent artist are not, we don't, we don't need a middleman anymore. Okay. So with that being said, let's fast forward to the, what's going on online. <laughs> Cause it's just ridiculous to me. You see, what's happening is a lot of people are speaking up, speaking out about the, um, allegations against established major artists who are using independent artists for mixtape placement. Okay. Now with that being said, in this day and age that we are in, why would anybody want to pay $500 for a mixtape placement, a slot? Here's why. People think, individual artists, independent artists think that the co-signment of the artist's name gives them some sort of clout. You know, when in reality right now, that's not the case. Remember, we're in this automated state, this, this time, this time period that we're in, everything is automated. You know, I just gave you an example about the, how major DSPs, how they score your tracks to determine, you know, how it fits in the algorithm. Nobody needs to be behind that to determine that. Okay. So. And clearly, some of you probably have seen this. If you've sent your music to some scam artist that said, hey, I think you're dope, that whole entire interaction is automated, even on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. You can have third-party apps that plug into your, your, your profiles, your social media platforms to handle all that for you. I'm just giving you the perspective. I'm, I'm putting it out there so you can understand. Don't be like, no, you know, you, that's not true. It is true. It is true. And if you don't believe me, since Facebook and Instagram are the same company, you can look for yourself. Facebook marketing has a whole list of digital approvers that they work with so that people are authorized to build these external tools to use with their platform. Same thing with, uh, um, it, it, so, so therefore you'll get, you'll see that, you know, oh, I can use this person, this vendor and because Facebook has already vetted them out and they're good and I can use them to put in my chat and, you know, monitor the whole interaction there. Okay. So what's happening is, is that people, people, and celebrities, major artists are teaming up. Let's not say major artists, cause that's not true. So let's just say that there are, there are a group of people who work with celebrities. Okay. That are in, that are targeting independent people, independent artists to pay for slots. And the actual major artist doesn't know that this is happening. This is the, this is the conflict here. This is the conflict. This is the issue. They don't know that this is happening. They might know and they don't care. They might know and be like me and understand the way it used to work and think that we're still living in that specific time. Or, you know, they just, you know, really just trying to get the bag and then they just, you know, just dip out. They really know what's going on. You know what I mean? You know? So you got these people. All right. A bunch of them. Hitting up your favorite artists. Using their social media accounts through these third party vendor tools. And they're like automating their whole interaction. You can send them a song. 
that's like baby shark and they're going to say it's fire and they want you on. They're looking to collect. They're looking to collect. They don't care. You or the artist, the independent artist, is going to believe that this interaction is real and this is the problem. When you are part of a scam or like a Ponzi scheme, this is the way I'm putting it, the, the rap Ponzi scheme, you are going to really want it. You, you are going to really want this to be true, believable. It's so It's too good to be true. The problem with this whole interaction is, is that they're making it believable. They're trying to give you something and it's not what the expectation is. And that's what makes this wrong. And it does make it different from the way it was handled back in the day when everybody needed to use this avenue to get their music out back then when you needed to get your music out it was totally there was a common agreement amongst both parties this right here this is not this is not what that is so trying to pick up where that was and use that now it's ridiculous it's ridiculous you're giving people false expectations from the time the interaction starts to the time the the, the payment is closed it's insane this is where it's wrong so this is how it goes down. You see an ad or you see a paid post or just let's just say regular post. You see a post by your favorite artists, right? Now, mind you, these artists or these accounts that you're following with your with the major artists, they're not ran by the major artists. They're ran by people or one person who's connected to all these accounts. Who knows? Who cares? I'm not that I don't I don't I'm not here to really tell you who they are. I'm trying to put things into perspective about what this is. OK, because at the end of the day, whether it's one one person or a group of people, I'm not going to just jump right in and blame the artists and say that they know. But the people who are running this, these accounts are being irresponsible and they are working together. If that's the case, that's just, this is just let's just let's just leave it there. I don't want to argue about it. So they're posting, tag an artist. I know you've seen that, you know. Oh, I got a mixtape coming out. I'm looking for somebody to be on my next album. Mind you, they probably don't know that any of this is going on. If they see it, they probably heard some passive, you know, statement from their team as far as like, yo, I think this will be a good opportunity. You know, you can help independent artists and you can make this amount of money and they just left it there probably because it seems like it i mean when you when i'm going on twitter right now and i'm looking at all these things they nobody's saying anything nobody's saying anything about it it's just it's ridiculous people are saying things about it but they're denying it but we'll get into that so you know you see these posts people are tagging them and this is the reason why I wanted to make this today because I'm seeing people that I know who are doing this and it's ridiculous. And I know we live in through crazy times, but dog, like y'all, y'all gotta be smarter. All right. Smarter. All right. So you tag your artist, they hit you up. It looks like them. It looks like the person that, you know, the, the major artist profile, it looks like that. And 
you're so excited. What do I need to do? You probably, you might got $500 in your pocket. Good for you right now. Like, great. But is it wise to spend it on some, on, on your favorite celebrity? You think, let, and I'm going to be nice about this. You think that a celebrity, a major artist, a public figure, is going to ask you with maybe, let's just say under 5,000 followers for $500 to be on their mix set. Most of these major artists are not even charging that for a feature. Why would they even entertain that? They wouldn't. If you was to walk up to Davies right now and be like, yo, I got $500, what you going to do? He's going to be like, I need to get a bottle of water. I can't do nothing with that. Period. They, 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 that's not how major artists spend their time. That's what I'm trying to get you guys to understand. That's not how they spend their time. That's not how they do business. That's not how they gain business. That's not that. Therefore, the person on the other side, the artist that you think you're talking to is not them. It's all automated. Whether it might be somebody that's spending a lot of their time behind this and making sure they're, you know, collecting their coins. But most of the time, it's automated. It's automated. And then if you got three or four people in on it, it's moving fast like they can they can stay on top of it and make sure that you know they close the deal period you know so let's fast forward basically i'm late to the game obviously but some people are still in denial and they're doing this i've seen I've started, it caught my attention because I went, I was looking for something on an artist and I ended up on the No Jumper podcast and there was an artist on there and underneath the title, it said scam. I'm like, whoa, scam, what? It was short clip. But one of the things I got from that clip was, you know, there's this whole chain on Reddit. So I went on Reddit. I'm like, rap scam? Type that in. I see a bunch of names. I see it, but that's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, this cannot be true. Like, what, what is this? You know, that this is one media outlet now, all right? And it's like 40, 50 comments in this Reddit thread. So I read through it. People are saying that they've, that yes, it's a scam because these are people who've actually used the service or interacted with these accounts. And then there are people who are just like, um, I know somebody who did it. Yeah. This person's talking about it here. So from there, I started doing some investigations. All right. I get my ass to Twitter. I see one person who was talking about it maybe a couple months ago from DJ Booth, the VP of Audio Mac, Warren Artist. This thread is long as hell. What was interesting about this thread on Twitter was that it was still active after he posted it like three months ago. People are posting their screenshots their interactions, they're attacking the artists. They're saying, you scammed me. There's even artists in there trying to justify what they're doing as correct. What? I, 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 I was like, what the hell? So I go into more, some, I go into more investigations. I get on YouTube. There's a bunch of people on YouTube talking about it. They are saying the same thing. If everybody's saying the same thing. If everybody's saying the same thing, right now we have two valid media outlets, two, two people in the media who we feel are responsible to 
give us the information that we need that have validated this, that are warning artists about this, that are confronting artists about this. Then I find an artist confront the situation. He's like telling people to not do this. It was actually two artists, basically. Two artists. They Don't worry if they're like, you know, if they're part of this game or whatever, because they're, they're, they're not. They're just, they just know that these things go on. So they're just telling people about it. That got a lot of views and got a lot of traction. I think it's important. I think it's important to talk about. So you got to understand that the people who are doing this are, aren't going to think this is wrong. And here's why this is a, this made sense back in the day. Okay. For them, this made sense for them. It was the only outlet that people needed. We're in a different time now. Do you really think that giving somebody $500 to $1,000 for a mixtape placement where the artist is never going to see your, see you, know who you are, listen to your music, or even repost the tape for promotion, do you think that's a wise investment? Because if it is, I want you to tell me why. Because I would never, I would never do that. That is ridiculous. You guys can use your money and do so many different things that for, for your career. You can get your own distribution on real platforms, okay? Where you can monetize and make something back before you couldn't do that, you had to really go outside and, and be outside and do some shows. But if you're in quarantine, you could do your own distribution, your own promotion. You can hire somebody to help you with this experience. But putting paying five hundred dollars for some for somebody that don't know who you are, I would be damned. Are you crazy? I would never. These guys don't care about you. They will never speak to you again. They will block you. They will take your money. And they're just going to go. And what's sad is that they're going to just go and change their name. And next year it's going to be on some more sophisticated shit. And if you don't understand the way things are working now, you're going to fall for it again. And that's, that's on some real ass shit. You can't, you gotta, you gotta know how, how this is work. So I hope that explaining the historical way that how this all came, because I think that's the part that was missing, gives people some context about what's going on now. All right. And I want the independent artists to just go out and do the research for yourself. You know, like. You can look at the podcasts. I think, I think uh, Joe Budden's podcast has something. No Jumper had something. I saw um, some some tweets on Twitter about the rap Ponzi scheme. Um, I saw uh, DJ Booth, like I mentioned, men mentioned a warning. Still having conversations to this day in that thread of people tagging. You can see the screenshots in there for yourself. I'm not making any of this up. This is some real ass shit. This is really happening out here. I encourage you to do your research and on top of that, please do some research on how you can get your own distribution. I really encourage people to have that kind of knowledge because we're in a different time now where that power is in your hands, literally. You don't need a big, huge computer with fast processing and all this other stuff. All that stuff is there for you. If you really, if you really wanted to get on, 
something or wanted that, that that person to co-sign you, there are services now that allow you when you distribute to through them that will place your music on NBA games, in movies, you have that power in your hand already. And that's less than $500. What are you doing? So I encourage everyone, please do you take a look at it. Um, and you know, the best thing for for you, like, as, a, as an independent upcoming artist, whether you're in it for a year or 10 years, it doesn't matter. The, the great thing about this time is that you don't need that middle person. If, if people really like your music, they're going to fuck with you. They're not going to ask you to pay. The same goes for shows. They're going to want you there. Okay. You shouldn't have to pay for anything. Pay for studio time. Pay for your music video, you know, pay, pay for your clothes. You know what I mean? Pay for the things for you, but don't give anything to anybody. You know, you, the one, one thing I learned outside of all of this is that you got to know how your whole, your whole shit is working because you don't want somebody from the outside coming in to tell you how it's done and then they leave. And they take that knowledge with them. You got to learn, even if you don't want to be part of doing that for the rest of your life, that, sp- that one little thing, you need to understand, you need to speak that language. You need to understand how, how things are evolving and changing and what works best for you. Because if you don't, somebody's going to come in, try to infiltrate you. And there we go. There it goes out the window. You, you, you can't, you can't, you got to. You have the opportunity to take this in your hands right now and make and, and, and have control over it. So even if you did end up giving someone $500 or $1,000 to, 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 and it didn't do anything from you, learn from that. I'm glad you're here and you're listening to me because now you know what you can do and how you can use that for you. Now you can get your whole distribution, your your own, get your, get your, get a, if you don't have BMI, if you don't have ASCAP, go set it up. That's $50 per song. Make sure you get your royalties when you get paid. Make sure people aren't putting your, your music, make sure you get your music distributed to TikTok. Make sure you get, get all that stuff up so that when people start listening to you, you're, you will get paid. Be smart about it. Don't just get on this, oh, get rich quick thing. And make sure that you're working that on your craft all the time. Okay? Don't be doing what somebody else is doing. That works for them. Do what you got to do. Improve on your stuff. If you really want these guys to, if you really want to work with your favorite artist one day, don't just be like, I want to work with him. He's my favorite. And I want this right now. No, no. Give, give them the reason to do that with you. Like, like organically. Give them that reason. Don't just be on some entitled shit like, yeah, I'm this, that, and the third. No, it will never last. Never, ever last. So I hope this information was valuable. I, I know we went over some time. I was not planning to do this for 40 minutes. But I hope that you guys can do your own research. Um, I'm not a podcaster. I'm not somebody that does videos or anything. But I felt like, you know, I like the fact that people are talking about this, but I really want to put some context into perspective so that people know, you know, what exactly is going on. So if you want to hear more, please let me know. Um, And yeah. Thanks, guys.